Welcome to Fancast. My name's Luke Payson. Uh, welcome back for all of those of you who are already subscribers to the channel. If you're not already, please subscribe so you can see more great interviews, including the one coming at you right now. Welcome back to the show, Drew Landefeld. Drew, welcome back. Thanks, Luke, for having me on. I really appreciate it, man. Well, I appreciate you coming on uh, from your job to just talk about your fight. It was just announced today. It was obviously matched a while ago, but uh, the 247 Combat podcast just wrapped up a couple hours ago. They announced your fight and one other, and are slowly building the card for Braun the Berg, 20, February 24th at the Murraysville uh, Fight Sports Zone, whatever it is. You got a big announcement today. Very exciting. You're taking on an exciting fighter. You're an exciting fighter yourself. When did this fight with Timbo Slice come together? How long did you know about it? What makes you excited and why did you take this fight? Um, I think I signed the contract about three or four weeks ago um, when they hit me up. I, they knew I was looking for a fight. They're like, are you healed up and everything? I'm like, yeah, I'll be ready to go by February. So they ended up finding me um, Timbo Slice, which couldn't get better than uh, like an exciting fight kind of deal. Um, he just won by inverted had an inverted triangle win and he loves to stand and bang so he's just the perfect opponent for me because sometimes i'll take it to the ground but as you know my last fight i let my opponent up and i love to strike just as much as i love to grapple so even not if if not more so yeah it's a very exciting matchup uh jim mooney the matchmaker was all excited about this matchup when they were talking about it today as well as uh hunter homestek the gm and of course uh, of course, Ryan Middleton, the owner. Uh, and one of the things that just happened, you know, Timbo's coming off a loss. You're coming off a loss. Timbo just fought Cowboy Eddie and was showing that he really likes to strike. Cowboy Eddie took him to the ground and made it like a ground and pound wrestling match, uh, which won in the fight. So congrats to, uh, to Cowboy Eddie. But it is kind of cool. Um, now, obviously, you guys are not making a promise that you'll stand and bang because somebody could take it to the ground. You've uh, shown some ground skill. You won your debut fight with a rear naked choke. Uh, actually, both of your wins have come by choke, so you clearly uh, know grappling, and obviously Tim, uh, Timbo Slight pulled off a submission that very well could be submission of the year. We'll know next week. Um, but I do think both of you tend to like to bang. Now, this fight was announced as a catch weight of 150, and the explanation was that Timbo is kind of gearing towards 145 wanted to take one at 150 to kind of test. Why did you accept the catch weight? Are you also thinking of going to 45 in the future? Or are you a 55er that just decided to, you know, meet halfway for this fight? So I'm actually a 45er. I fought 55 at 247, the first my first fight, because that's the only fight they had for me. So I was like, this is the fight I gotta go up a weight because this is the fight I have to take. I'm ready to fight right now. So time to fight. So other than that, I've always fought at 45. Um, if I was, uh, hindsight, I would have never fought at 45. If it was day of weigh-ins, that should never even be a thing. Hopefully that gets changed in MMA eventually, because you just can't have enough time to rehydrate unless you're putting an IV in your body to, that's the only way to actually rehydrate within the six hours that they give you sometimes not, sometimes not even before you're fighting. So, um, but now that it's two, four, seven and always day before wins, it'll always be 45. And again, I just wanted to get a fight and they Timbo is an exciting fight. This is something I know the fans are going to want to see. Um, it's going to be bloody. It's going to be violent, man. I promise that. So, um, and that just gets me excited. It makes me happy. And that makes him happy. If you ever see him getting <laughs> bloodied and battered, dude, it makes him happy. So that's why we do this. Um, we're, we're both built for this shit. So, Let's, you know, let's settle, let's settle in the cage and then we'll be drinking beers after. So, yeah, it's a very exciting matchup. It was cool of you to give us the behind the scenes of uh, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania always has for MMA the day before weigh in. So, and that's something fighters need to need to ask. When I was a coach out of Philly, uh, we took New York fights and that was before like the UFC was legalized. Like, I think it was only amateur, not pro, but whatever mm -hmm. they had, they had day of weigh-ins it did make the the rehydration process basically impossible and i had a fighter that had cramps in the fight down his neck and back uh because he was still you know he was still dehydrated and his body wasn't 
recovering well because you'd only have like three hours to rehydrate. So absolutely, the day before makes a big difference. I think 150 is kind of cool. It allows you to not have to cut as much to 45. And obviously, Timbo is trying to figure out whether or not 45 is is a good thing for him. What you've already said that'll be exciting. What have you uh, been improving? You're coming off a loss. Uh, obviously, it was a, it was a submission loss. Where have you been training? What have you been working on? And with the experience, do you feel like you're coming in with like more experience and willingness to show that you've improved your skills? Yeah, um, 100%. I think it's more um, so two, I'm not making any excuses, but two weeks before my last fight, I broke my toe pretty bad and it got up into my foot. So I couldn't do when I was doing sprints, I felt I felt bone shifting in the top of my foot. So I was like, dang, this is annoying. Still trained on it. Still took the fight. And I think I was having a really good fight. And I think I was winning the fight. And I think I just ran out of gas. I don't think I was able to prepare enough. And maybe I shouldn't have took the fight. But as a fighter, you want to take it as much as possible. Like if you have trained for it, everything we put into these training camps and stuff, um, in my mind, I'm not going to let a little broken toe stop me from <laughs> stop me from fighting. But it ended up it was the more part it was going up to the top of my bones. I felt the bone shifting when I was trying to do sprints and stuff like that. So I'm feeling really good. This uh, training camp, I did have a little elbow injury on my last jujitsu match and the fight to win. It got popped out of it. Saw um, popped out, but that it took some time to heal actually for once. So I'm um, feeling really good. I'm going to make sure I train smart. So I don't get any injuries going into this fight. So I, my cardio can be amazing and I can put on uh, the show. I know I can. Well, that makes perfect sense. It's it's a learning process. I give you and all other particularly amateur fighters credit because you're not getting paid, you know, and it is about getting the experience, particularly working through an injury. There's always that fine line. It sounds like your injury was maybe on the side of, of injury withdrawing being the, maybe the better option, but at the same time, uh, and, and this is hard, right? Because we'll hear this at the UFC level or, or the PFL level. There are I don't think any fighter goes in feeling a hundred percent. And so if a fighter only fights when they're feeling a hundred percent, they're not going to fight much. Right. And there, there are times where fighters understandably, but they don't fight because they're banged up and, and maybe they could have worked through it. Then there's injuries, maybe like your toe or some of the other injuries we know fighters have fought with where maybe it wasn't uh, the best yeah. idea. You know, there was a, there was a fighter uh, a couple shows ago that dislocated his shoulder warming up for a two, four, seven, fight needed to get put back in by the ringside doctor, which of course is one of the advantages having a ringside doctor. And of course he wanted to still fight, but that fight was medically withdrawn because you can't fight after just having this location set. And he was bummed about it. And of course he was still willing to fight. And I, I kind of saw his perspective, like, Hey man, it feels good. It's back in. And, and he wanted to still fight. And of course his opponent still wanted to fight obviously, because it was just, you know, just a little bit before their fight. Uh, but that's where, you know, this is a regulated sport. This is not street fighting. And so, um, so you know, obviously the the doctor made his decision there. And as somebody who's had dislocations and had shoulder surgeries, I think the doctor was looking on the uh, on the safety side for the fighter. Uh, you know, and sometimes that's, that's you can't push through every injury. Glad you um, are feeling good coming into this. You also talked through about it does take little tweakings of training. You want to train hard so that you're in shape, that you've got cardio, but you also want to train smart so that you're not getting hurt right, right before a fight. So do you want to make a prediction going into this fight versus Timbo Slice? You guys are both experienced guys. Uh, what prediction do you want to make or, or not make? I, he says someone's tapping or napping and I'm, I'm going with one of those, man. I don't think it's going to go the distance. Um, I do think someone's going to finish it and I'm hoping that's me and I'm going to try to make sure it's me. But uh, I I respect him, dude. He he's a uh, he's a game opponent. And that's why I, I take these fights. If I it gets me out of bed to train every day, like hey, if I'm I'm gonna get beat up if I don't go to the gym. So it makes it makes it it makes it fun. It makes it fun to get an opponent like this and be able to train. It helps you train a couple times a day. It's like all right, yep, I gotta go for a run. Gotta make sure I'm ready for this guy. But um, it's gonna be a good one. I think uh. I think it's going to finish second round. And I think I'm um, hopefully I'm going to get the KO. Hey, you the KO. prediction second, second round, second four. round KO. I'm going to, I'm going to make some tweaking to my training camp. Cause I think that's what it was looking like in my last fight. And I just didn't put it together enough. And that's what I need to learn from. And I will. 
Well, you, you bring up all the right points that training for a fight needs to be exciting. There needs to be a, a risk of losing. And obviously it's the same way for Timbo. Timbo, you're a, you're a Pittsburgh based guy and Timbo slice is not, it feels like he is because every fight he's had, <laughs> yeah, has been yeah, I know. but he's from I Michigan. He was from Michigan. I was like, wait, this guy's from Michigan. He's been from Michigan the whole time. It's <laughs> yeah, not like he's a guy yeah. that started in Pittsburgh and moved. No, he's a Michigan guy the whole time. And yeah. now, so, so really what, what's exciting about that is you're, you're fighting a guy who's obviously going to show up, puts a lot of dedication in, and you guys are at the, the advanced amateur level. And, and the reality is at the more experienced, I, I assume this one's uh, advanced amateur. Um, yeah. And so at the advanced amateur level, and you know this, and, and he knows this, you know, nobody's an advanced amateur that doesn't still want to fight, right? There might be some guys that take one or two fights to just try it out. But by the time you get three, four, five fights in like you guys are, you know, you're committed to to making it work, to, to pushing through stuff, for putting in better and better. And you guys are both very exciting. And most of these fights at the advanced amateur, as a as a fan, I, I hate seeing anybody lose because you guys have put in so much work. The advanced amateurs, particularly you're in your third 247 fight. He's fought for 247 a bunch. You kind of get to know people. The commentator in me, you can kind of point out things as it happens. But the fan in me, it's hard to watch anybody at the advanced amateur or pro lose because obviously it's it's a disappointment. But you continue to you continue to improve. We just saw Justin the General Patton, if you follow 247, yeah. come back with an incredible performance after a yeah. heartbreaking loss, you know? Yeah, and I think he was winning the fight and then lost by rear naked choke. I was winning the fight yeah. and lost by rear naked choke. I'm going to make no, sure no, I get... I, I agree, and that was something... Like, I that's the exact... And then he comes back, so it's, like, inspiring watching him come back right after that. Because I was like, I need to take some time. I did some jiu-jitsu competitions. I was going to fight Lucas Siebert in a kickboxing Muay fight. Yeah. He ended up getting yeah, uh, Muay Thai. He ended up getting injured, unfortunately. And that's just like the little stuff that happens. And luckily, he was smart enough and his coaches were smart enough to come together and be like, this isn't the right thing to do. So, right. you know, and I wish I wish him all the best and everything. But um, it just comes down to that. Yeah, I do want, like you said, I do want to do this. And uh, after you do two like three four five six fights you're not just doing it just uh do it like there's a you're trying to go pro that's the whole goal if you're yeah. fighting in you should be trying to go pro that's that's what i've always come to so hopefully i can make that happen after this year i want to put a three fight three fight win streak together and then hopefully go pro well that even gets into the future prediction stuff which is great um, I, I usually ask that stuff after, you know, after a win, but it's uh, great that you have a, that. No, no. Hey, you're, you're driving this. You're driving this. This is awesome. I appreciate <laughs> it. But, but that actually is awesome that you see 2024 and you have a game, game plan of three fights, three wins going pro after that. Uh, we've seen amateurs. It's really about development. Your opponent, Tim, has had his fair share of loss. It's about development. Um, and uh, just for clarification, because, I assume the general Patton wouldn't care, but I believe he lost his last fight, second last fight by guillotine, not rear naked choke. Okay. Okay. But okay. Either. Yeah. Because it was in his case, he told me beforehand that, uh, you know, he was coming up, you know, he was c coming up off the ground and left his head, left his head there and got it caught. And obviously a lot of training was to avoid that situation uh, in, in takedowns. Cause it, you know, it's a, it was a defensive submission. Um, but but to your point, you can be winning a fight and lose, particularly by submission. Um, and and I and I think it was really important for the general and for you to both recognize that you lost and work to improve, obviously. But give yourself credit. It can be really tempting psychologically to give yourself no credit, beat yourself up, and say you're the worst fighter of all times, and kind of like that emotional crash, as opposed to recognizing. The good, you got to take both. And so yeah. that's something the general talked about on my podcast that he had a focus on the fact that he was doing a lot good in the Zimic fight, even though it ended up being a loss with that flash uh, guillotine. Same thing with you versus Logan Fink. It was your rematch against him. And so obviously you were, you know, there was a lot of emotions in there. You were doing a great job right up until, and congrats to him, he caught you in the rear naked choke. But, but I think you got to be able to balance that so that you could come in to this cage with confidence knowing that you are doing a lot of good you do you are writing pr progress you know and, yeah. and you're seeing you're seeing that 100 i lost my train of thought but i was saying yeah it's inspiring that justin comes back and yeah. wins right after because i was like 
what's wrong with me? Like, what, what, what's wrong with me? I need to do some jujitsu. I need to do some kickboxing fights. That's why I was going into that. But um, I'm ready to get back into it. Like you said, you just got to take the good out of what you can. And you have to just understand like, yeah, hey, I lost. That sucks. Got to get back to it. And I'm going to get back, get a dub, just like the just like the general. And, you know, and then get my winning streak and uh, hopefully go, go pro right after this year. Well, it sounds like a great plan, Drew. I appreciate you jumping on. Uh, watch Drew Landefeld and all the other fighters either in person. You can buy tickets from 247fighting.com. Make sure you give a fighter credit. They're not selling physical tickets this time, to my understanding. So you need to get fight, uh, tickets online, but the uh, fighter will get credit just as if he was selling you a physical ticket. It comes to you February 24th. You can also download the 247 Live app and, and buy pay-per-view through that way. Your fighter of choice, Drew, in this case, will also get credit. You just have to select the, uh, select the fighter. I appreciate you coming on. This has been Luke Basin with Drew Landefeld from MA Fancast. Can't wait to see Braun the Berg 20 for 247 Fighting Championships February 24th. Thanks so much, bud.